Welcome back to another episode of Consciously Clueless. I'm your host, Carly, and I'll be your guide on this journey from consciousness to cluelessness and back around again. Today on the podcast, I have Matt Clayton. Matt worked as a general surgeon for 18 years before deciding to go into the restaurant business. He is the owner of one of my favorite vegan restaurants of all time in St. Paul, Minnesota, J. Selby's. Matt does an amazing job of creating an environment that you not only want to go to if you're vegan, but you want to bring all your non-vegan friends because they will find something they love. Here we go. So thank you for joining me My on pleasure. the podcast. I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, if you have listened or not, that's okay. But the podcast is called Consciously Clueless. Okay. And I chose that name because I thought it really well suited the idea of this journey of like, sometimes you're like, yeah, I get it. I'm totally conscious. I'm with it. And then other days you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> So I like to ask people, um, where are you feeling right now on that spectrum from conscious to clueless? Uh, pretty conscious. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think I think that that's my personality, though. What do you mean? Well, I, <sighs> that's just that's just kind of person I am. I guess I feel like I'm a more conscious than clueless person generally. Like kind of always exploring and digging into stuff and yep, yep for that's sure. A beautiful way to live. <laughs> Unless it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it is. <laughs> sure. Why not? So you are the owner of Jay Selby's, my favorite vegan restaurant. Indeed. Tell me about that journey. Where did that come from? The long story or the abbreviated version. <laughs> go for it. We've got we've got a while. Go for the long story. Tell us everything. Well, so I was a practicing physician for many years um, and had decided that it was time for me to uh, leave that part behind and move on. And so at the end of 2015, I stepped away from medical practice um, without any real um, idea of what I was going to do next. So that might've been a clueless phase. <laughs> um, and spent some time I, at that point I was, had already been plant-based for several years. Okay. Um, and had kind of launched into the whole plant-based thing um, as a result of running distance, um, mm. half, half marathon distance. And I was really looking to improve my running times. And uh, had been reading a lot about uh, the athletes that were primarily plant-based and doing mm -hmm. quite well. Rich Roll and people like that. All right. Where was I? So let's go back to you were <laughs> trying to. Cool. You, <laughs> you were, were plant-based, um, inspired by the likes of Rich Roll. Sure. And trying to shave some time off of half yep. marathons. Yep, and that worked. That worked great, actually. So I was happy about that. But anyway, um, stepped away from medical practice, looking for something to do. Um, ended up going down to um, Phoenix for a uh, half my half marathon, uh, the Phoenix half marathon, which is all downhill, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, in February, which is a nice time to be in Phoenix, hmm. and. Um, we ended up at a restaurant in Phoenix called Green Vegetarian, which um, is really a vegan restaurant. Mm -hmm. and, and we really enjoyed it. And I, we kind of walked out of the green saying, geez, it would be great if there was a place like that in the Twin Cities. <laughs> Where this <laughs> is going. So uh, upon returning to the Twin Cities, I actually contacted the owner of Green and asked if he would be interested in doing a project in the Twin Cities. Mm. And he said, no, he'd grown up in Chicago and he was not interested in living north of Phoenix. <laughs> so, Fair enough. So I asked if he would be offended if I um, used his uh, restaurant as a template. And he said, no, he'd be, he'd be honored. And so the journey to Jay Selby's had begun. Um, so, you know, we went out and 
I had been walking um, a lot that winter and had walked past that corner many mm -hmm. times with it all boarded up with signs on the window for lease. Uh, so I actually called the landlord and got a tour through the space, which was a disaster. Uh, oh, really? Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was so run down. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, we had the vision and uh, could see making that corner ours. And so uh, uh, there we are. And a year and a half later, we, we were open. So. so did you have any restaurant experience or did you, I mean, you were a physician, so I, you're an intelligent human, but like the restaurant business <laughs> is a whole nother ball game. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, um, well, I worked in restaurants uh, primarily as a cook uh, okay. through, through uh, early college, high school and, and early college um, before starting on the medical journey. So was it like I'd never been in a restaurant before, mm -hmm. um, but I hadn't for many years, 30 <laughs> plus years. Um, <clears throat> I did, I do cook all the time uh, at home. So, you know, it's not like I'm a stranger to a kitchen. Right. Um, and when I knew that I wasn't going to stick in practicing medicine forever, which I knew many years before I stepped away, um, I actually had thought that I would um, maybe uh, do healthcare administration work. Okay. And so I had actually gone back to school to get an MBA. And so um, what I discovered during that time was the worst job maybe on the planet was healthcare administration. Oh, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I abandoned that plan. Uh, but so, uh, yeah, it's not like I didn't have any business experience. I mean, right. I kind of, you know, generally knew what I was doing, I thought. Um, but yeah, it seemed like a good idea at the time, right? So, <laughs> oh, I'd say so. So we, we just jumped in. So what made you leave your practice, if I can ask? Burnout. Yeah. Let's make it simple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's always a long... And, um, it's a long journey. Uh, I actually had a benign brain tumor um, that was removed and left me deaf in one ear. And okay. with some um, deficits, primarily in balance, but okay. it also um, makes sleep deprivation really difficult for me. Um, mm. I really get, um, for lack of a scientific term, kind of wonky uh, mm -hmm. when, I, when I don't get good sleep. And uh, there are not many gigs. I was a general surgeon. There are not many gigs in general surgery that don't involve taking call with the possibility oh, you could be yeah. up all night. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of my, <clears throat> when I came to the uh, conclusion that really uh, at some point I was going to have to step away from taking call, that would really mean stepping away from practice. Right. But then there was, you know, a million other things that came together to make me want to get out. So. I did. Well, selfishly, I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody would have done it if it wasn't me, so. Because I am I live way up north, Minnesota, so it is my treat every single time when I go to the cities, <laughs> oh, at so least glad. at least once to go to J. Selby's. Oh, we're so glad. Where, where are you up north? In Grand Marais. Oh, <laughs> we're up in Grand Marais this summer. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. I grew up here yeah. um, and came back as an adult and have a new appreciation for it sure. now that I'm not a surly teenager. Understood. But um, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful place to be, but there's not a vegan restaurant. <laughs> no, so, there was not. <laughs> so there's a few options here and there, but going to Jay Selby's is such a treat. Well, yeah, I kind of when we when we started the whole thing. Um, and people would say, why are you doing this? And I said, well, I was tired of being the afterthought on everybody's menu planning. <laughs> yes. Yes. Or tired of eating a side salad and fries. Exactly. You know, <laughs> you, you'd, you'd go out to eat with people and there would be this, you know, whole long, you know, 50 items that they could choose from. And then it's like, well, what are you going to have? It's like, oh, fries. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yep. No, I'm sick of that. No. Every vegan has been through that. Of course. 
at a restaurant of eating fries, a side of fries. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So in terms of opening the restaurant, I think it's a really cool story. I had no idea that you were a practicing physician. Yeah. Uh, it must feel like another life at this point. Sometimes. But um, I think it's inspiring because a lot of times we think of, oh, I have this idea, you know, like I want to open a restaurant, but I have to have X, Y, Z. And maybe that's 15 years experience or whatever it is. And <laughs> to be able to be like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm inspired by this restaurant that I went to in Phoenix well, and going to make it work. Most um, most surgeons don't really lack for self confidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's a good thing. Oh yeah, no, oh, yeah, absolutely. You you know what someone <laughs> you operating want a confident on you, surgeon. Yeah, you know what somebody operating on you who thinks they might be able to do that surgery. <laughs> what somebody knows they can do it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm totally down with that thought, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree, though. I, I think that a lot of these things that we worry about getting done really are fears in our own head that mm. maybe aren't really as real as we think they are. And, yeah. You know, you could push through most of them. That doesn't so, mean it's an easy process. but Right, right, right. But they're possible. Yeah, for sure. What for I sure. really um, also appreciate about, you know, following you on on social media, Jay Selby's and, and just knowing more about <laughs> the organization is the restaurant, but it feels like an organization just because you also take a stance on important things going on in the world or your responses or your responses to things. Even when um, one of the times you were broken into, I remember seeing a video that you made it and in response you were asking people to participate in meatless mondays yeah and i was like wow what an interesting response <laughs> to uh, having their restaurant broken into oh yeah that was um that was right after thanksgiving mm -hmm. and, and we every year on thanksgiving we do a food giveaway and, uh, it's been our our tradition um, that we have every year, except this year, opened up our doors and had people come in and just pick up a free meal, mm. and um, and and you know, people want to leave donations, so we said, sure, we set up a donation stand for that. We had collected money that year for the uh, Hiawatha encampment, okay, uh, when that was happening, and um, yeah, we'd collected uh, like five thousand dollars to donate. Uh, wow. and that was all in our in our safe and they stole our safe <laughs> so somebody broke in that was on thursday and somebody broke in saturday morning early morning um you know smashed in the door you know broke up some furniture in the basement still walked off with they walked off with part of the desk in the safe the safe was bolted to the desk and the wall and they had the <laughs> wall and the in the desk and they walked out the door with it and uh, yeah you know what are you gonna do um, so what made you have a response then to ask people to be more vegan like what well, was that well, thought process people so that, that got a lot of press that we've been broken into and our donations have been mm -hmm. stolen and primarily because a lot of people uh, thanksgiving is apparently a really slow news day so that Thanksgiving morning, all of the TV stations were over at the restaurant. Oh, wow. What are you doing? And we're like, well, we're giving away food like we do all the time. So um, so it was a follow up for a lot of them. And so we got a lot mm. more press on that than we probably deserved. Uh, it turns out, as I came to learn later, that the person that stole our safe had broken into over 100 restaurants. So <laughs> it was we were part of a spree. Morning. oh my gosh anyway. that's a job that's a career oh yeah yeah they were doing well anyway wow. um so but we got but we got the press you know that's the way mm -hmm. it works so all of a sudden people are calling and, and oh, emailing and texting and 
social media messaging that they wanted to donate money to us. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, insurance is going to make us whole. We're, you know, we're insured. We'll, we'll be mm-hmm. covered. Um, but, you know, if you want to do something, do something that's useful for the planet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need your help right now. I mean, I appreciate the offers. Right. And that's, that's awesome. But, you know, let's do something to, to really further the cause more than, than just donate money to the restaurant. So that was the, uh, the impetus behind that. Well, I think it was really great because it was a reminder of the connection, right, to everything. Exactly. Exactly. And that, um, like, yeah, I'm, we really appreciate you wanting to donate and make an impact. Here's another way to make an impact. Here's why we have a exactly. vegan restaurant, exactly. you know, like subliminal well, messaging. Exactly. Well, no, it's our, our you know, um, we went through the sometimes tedious exercise that all businesses should go through at some point of having a mission and a vision statement. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your, your mission statement is what are you doing right now? You know, how are you, how are you conducting yourself right now? And your vision should be what's your long-term vision for the future. And the Jay Selby's vision statement is, is really clear that our, our vision is that plant-based eating will become the norm, not the exception. So we're just, you know, trying to act consistent with our vision. Right. Well, that's a pretty cool vision. <laughs> it might be cool, but it's kind of the, the necessity. It's, well, yeah. You know. I mean, it's cool for a restaurant to have that vision, the, to make it beyond just what you're doing, you know, like that connection piece that I think we lose a lot with food specifically. Oh, for sure. But, you know, I th- think that you have to be particularly conscious, maybe a little bit, uh, but uh, once you start digging into the food supply and the food sourcing, even scratching the surface, you soon find that there are unsustainable practices in place that are never going to get us 50 years into the future. Right. So things totally. need to change. So that's our, so that's what we're there for. So when you went vegan, was it just you started with you know, wanting to shave time off of half marathon. So, so it was uh, a health start, would you say? Well, so I'm going to, I'm going to play semantics because again, surgeons are very semantic people. I, I actually was plant-based for years okay. without, without even considering veganism. Oh, okay. So, you know, I, I really, the veganism really surrounds the whole idea of animal welfare and animal Mm -hmm. rights and animal preservation and not eating or using animals for things that to eat or other items clothing right so i really didn't think about veganism at all when i started i mean i started as a plant-based person um really as a health and physical uh, mm-hmm. experiment for myself which has now gone on for <laughs> eight years <laughs> but, <laughs> but but that was really kind of an experiment of course the minute that I that I tried started it everyone I knew said oh you won't even last a week and, you know, well that's not true but here we are <laughs> exactly um, so that was that was fun but um it wasn't really until I um had retired from medicine Mm -hmm. and um but I just wanted to keep my medical credentials up you know you never know a restaurant can be a speculative business and you know (laughs) I might need a safety net backup plan exactly backup plan so I had um I had done so well that's so I stepped in and did the um uh T. Colin Campbell uh plant-based nutrition course through Cornell Mm -hmm. um which is a lot of continuing medical education credits, which was nice. Um, But that really kind of um, made me understand in a way that I had never been taught before that eating animals is completely not necessary for your nutritional needs. Right. And in fact, is detrimental to your health. So 
if you can think when you get to that true understanding that it's not necessary and it's actually right. bad for you, then you kind of have to say, well, that's a lot of killing for no good reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, first for something that's actually doing you harm. Um, right. That's really kind of gets hard to hard to embrace. So I think at that point I would have I, I would have embraced the vegan uh, culture, but it probably wasn't until then that I did. So what you're several years in identifying with the semantics is that kind of like activism piece coming in, would you say? Well, I, I think that there are plenty of people who can pursue a plant based diet, as you were already alluding, for other reasons, whether they want to protect the planet, whether mm -hmm. they want to uh, improve their health, improve mm -hmm. their physical performance, um, you know, whatever. And, and, right. and technically, they're not vegans. If you choose to go that way because you are opposed to the animal um, portion of it, then yes, you are a vegan, mm -hmm. technically. So that's the, that's the difference, right? When we're talking about semantics. Vegans are a subset mm -hmm. of plant-based eaters. <laughs> you should know, and I should, I should clarify that um, all social media posting for Jay Selby's is not done by me. I, I'm, I'm not you the, avoid it. I am not the person for that. It's not my medium <laughs> at all. Well, whenever I see new posts of food, I'm always like, oh man, do I need to go to the cities anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be uh, Casey, who's a social media person. And Casey has been uh, with me since the very beginning, since before there was a Jay Selby's. Oh, wow. And, and, um, and Lindsay, who is our general manager. Um, okay. And the two of them manage virtually all of the social media posting. So I really so, have nothing to do with it. <laughs> except occasionally to provide context. <laughs> right. So back to becoming plant-based, yeah. I'll use the right term. Sure. Um, but when you were becoming plant-based, it was for health and it was for like Absolutely. marathon kind of stuff. So would you say that after taking the um, Cornell course, that was when you that was like the switch, like you said, that was when you started learning more. Did you kind of dive into environment stuff or animal stuff? I feel like a lot of people I've talked to, there's a domino effect. Like there's like, oh, this issue. And then I learned about this issue. And then, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I really came at it from, as I say, a, a physical performance and then health uh, mm -hmm. aspect, you know, forks over knives or Baselstein, right. um, that kind of thing. Um, and so when I started, I really was a really serious whole food plant-based sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then uh, the Cornell course really did um, kind of put a lot of the environmental issues in front of me and mm -hmm. kind of where I wasn't really maybe as aware of those. And so um, that was interesting. And then uh, the animal piece, um, I would attribute primarily to Melanie Joy. I don't know if you oh, know okay. Melanie. Yep. But um, you know, kind of watched a couple of her talks and she's, she's pretty effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll link some of her talks in the show notes of this. Making, making you think about, you know, why you eat what you eat. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting, some of her books are really great. Yeah. So what is next for Jay Selvi? It's like, what is the vision is that plant-based <laughs> eating will be the norm, it not will. the exception. It will. Um, you know, and I think that, so it's, it's interesting. So I'll kind of take off on that for a minute. So mm -hmm. we get a lot of people who want to, who, who have things that would kind of naturally fit into a more traditional vegan restaurant sort of space. And for those who have not been to the Jay Selby's, we kind of, I would say, aren't exactly a traditional vegan restaurant. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> well, our, our, the, obviously nobody's, well, we have not opened our dining room since last March. So, right. and we won't until I feel like this 
COVID is under better control, mm -hmm. which I would define as average daily cases in the state is under 200 per okay. day, <laughs> since we're somewhere around 3,000. Yeah. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. And I know that the governor opened up the dining rooms again, which is probably a mistake, but mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever. We're not opening ours until I feel like it's safe for my employees to be in close contact with people who don't wear masks. Right. It'll be a while. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, the space itself, I think, is uh, was really designed to be about as mainstream as, as it could be. Um, mm -hmm. It's fairly uh, Spartan. <laughs> we definitely do not have TVs and have never had TVs in the place. Mm -mm. We never will. Um, I and, love that. And it's, you know, kind of natural wood and, um, uh, but really pretty simple, uh, pretty simple color scheme, um, really kind of just aiming to be a light, welcoming, friendly space. Um, the menu itself is primarily um, comfort food favorites mm -hmm. um, that uh, people who are not vegan can or not plant-based can enjoy, uh, I think, just as well as people who are. And That's so, my favorite part is bringing people who aren't well, plant-based or vegan and being so, like, try this and then try this. <laughs> so that was actually... That, I mean, that was really our, what we, what, that's what we were shooting for. We were not shooting for the place where if you're plant-based, you go to, to have, you know, your Buddha bowl. Right. Because there are places where you can do that. Mm -hmm. What we wanted was the place where when you're plant-based or vegan and you go with your friends, the that you're not the person who has to pick like the one find the one thing on the menu, but they do. But they can yeah. find something. They can find something that at least sounds intriguing or looks interesting mm -hmm. and hopefully is a close enough match to what they're expecting that they're delighted. Right. And and so the, trying to get that light bulb moment for non-plant-based people is like, oh, maybe this is a possibility. Right. Oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. Hey, I could do this, you know, <laughs> and, but that's, I mean, that's how you get more of them. And, Absolutely. And, and while I would love for there to be a whole food plant-based, you know, sit down, lovely, fancy dinner place until there's more plant-based eaters, you're not going to have that. Right. Um, it's not sustainable as a business, but mm -hmm. if you triple the number of people who are plant-based or who eat plants regularly, then that becomes a possibility. So anyway, so that's really what, what our goal is. Um, we get, so anyway, we have a lot of people who, who might have things that would fit into that more traditional vegan place. Okay. Um, you know, more anyway, and, and they want to, I'll, I'll use an example. We, we recently had somebody who makes, who, who's a juicer and makes, okay. makes fancy juices and, and mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're really good. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to sell those through Jay Selby's. And we said, we'll try, but they're not going to sell. That's not, mm. that's not our clientele. Right. <laughs> our, <laughs> you know, and so we, we carried them for a couple of weeks and we sold like three and we abandoned that project. Um, and then right at about the same time, uh, a group that makes uh, waffles and has started making vegan waffles uh, and makes cookies and has vegan cookies, wanted to sell vegan cookies. And we're like, yeah, our people will buy that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> so we got these fancy cookies and, you know, they like sold out the first day. <laughs> it was like, you know, I feel bad for it. somebody wanted to sell, you know, fancy mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. Never right. Gonna, never going to sell Jay selfies. Right. Uh, so. Oh, that's so interesting. So, what does that mean for the future then? Looking forward for Jay selfies. Oh. <laughs> hopes, hopes, and dreams, and exactly. Well, you know, it's kind of I guess depends on what happens with the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, when will this thing burn itself out? Um, right. You know, I. I think we we have from the beginning talked about whether we could feasibly have a second location mm -hmm. 
and it looks like we're going to get through the pandemic at least intact um maybe smaller than we were before right but, but intact so you know i think that uh that's something <laughs> something uh, positive yeah. and, absolutely uh, and i think uh you know we could certainly look forward to maybe having re, re revisiting that discussion of the second location at some point in the, in the year or two that second location doesn't happen to be in grand marais does it <laughs> <laughs> is that on the table or no no so all right well so, let me know so kind of and i can speak to that you know we we also have a food truck which we didn't get out last year mm -hmm. um, and the food truck seemed like it would be a really good idea but um it's an interesting it's an interesting study in marketing um mm -hmm. The food truck does okay at events, and particularly events where there are going to be people who are interested in plant-based food, mm -hmm. um, music venues, music festivals, yeah. uh, food truck festivals where people are looking for an option, um, you know that sort of thing. Street vending is a disaster. Mm. I'm saying it's a disaster. It's just not. There's there's no money in it for us. So oh, interesting. We go to a place where we know that there's a collection of people and there will be enough people to kind of, you know, be interested in plant based. We okay, but if you put it on the street, you know, they walk by us and go get their burger or their hero from right. the meat place every right. time. It's wow. kind of, it's it's a little depressing. I mean, yeah. we, we've been at the Capitol. Uh, there's a food truck thing that happens at the Capitol a lot of days in the mm -hmm. summer. And, you know, the, the burger place next to us might do, you know, two grand and over lunch and we do like $200. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just wow. Doesn't, doesn't work out for us. Um, so the food truck thing isn't quite as lucrative as I had hoped it would be. Um, yeah. But it does, I think, serve a purpose of getting us out where at places where there are diners that are interested. So. Right. So what I'm hearing is Grand Marais is not in the future anytime soon. It's not not in the business plan. Well, I don't know. What do you think the, the percentage of your plant-based diners are in Grand Marais? It's probably not too high. No, not too high. No. Um, I want to circle back to something that I thought of, and then we we went somewhere else and I forgot. But I think it's really interesting to hear from physicians and people that have practiced talk about what they learned about nutrition <laughs> or didn't learn. Sure. So once you went plant-based, were you surprised? Were you like, where was this information? Or were you like, yeah, I knew this. I just wasn't doing it. I'm just curious. So um, interestingly, and you're probably going to find this hard to believe, but surgeons, general surgeons in particular, are probably more nutritionally aware than most physicians, hmm. or at least in the time that I was trained. Right. Um, and we had quite a bit of uh, nutritional education really surrounding the critically ill. Okay. And then I actually took care of burn patients for many years. And there's a lot of nutrition in the, in the world of uh, burn care. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So I was would say that for my generation, which <laughs> for those of us who received our medical training in the 80s <laughs> um, and, and, and maybe early 90s, um, that uh, I was probably far more nutritionally aware than most. And in fact, really throughout my medical career, um, I did a fair amount with um, intravenous nutrition. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I worked with nutritionists quite a bit and pharmacists mm -hmm. about nutrition. And I was pretty aware of what, what what's required. That doesn't seem like the norm. No. No, would I would you say I would, when I went to medical school, there was no classes in nutrition whatsoever. Zero. Oh my and gosh. that was that was at the University of Minnesota in the eighties. Okay. And I, I don't actually know what they teach at this point, but I know it's not very much. And I was I, gonna say, you know, I I have heard colleagues 
<laughs> say some pretty outlandish things about nutrition, which kind of are would be truly cringeworthy. Um, you know, saturated fat doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh. It's like, what? <laughs> Interesting. Like, like, have you read anything recently? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you come from? You know, you know silly. And um, so I spent a lot of time um, dealing with uh, digestive problems as a general okay. section. And so, you know, really towards the end, um, I was always amused that uh, a huge number of patients would ask me, well, should I be taking a stool softener? And I would always say, no, you should eat your greens. <laughs> you should get some more fiber. <laughs> just, and you... just eat greens. You don't, you don't have to like go to the store and buy some a tub of stuff that you shovel down your mouth every day. You just need to go to the store and buy something green and eat it. <laughs> you know, just like your mother told you 50 years ago. Yeah, I... Um, what well, I am lactose intolerant, and mm -hmm. that was kind of the first sure. thing that uh started this whole journey of being plant based and vegan. But I, for in college, was just I would eat and I would be in pain, sure, cons consistently. And I went to the doctor and I went to Augsburg for my undergrad, so sure. I was in the cities and I was going to the doctor and they did ultrasounds and they put me on different medications to try and help with my digestion and all this different stuff. And finally, after that, nothing worked and I was just sick all the time. And finally my mom, I had to admit my mom was right because she was like, you're lactose intolerant. That's what's happening. <laughs> That's embarrassing. And and I was like, oh, fine, I'll try it. And I cut out dairy or took those like pills you could sure. take to help digest it at first. And I felt so much better. Sure. And I had been to multiple, I mean, at one point I had a doctor tell me that just like people's normal um, bowel movements are really a pendulum. And my pendulum just <laughs> swings a little wider than most. I mean, it was it's wild when I think back Yeah, that not one person said, and I'm, I'm being truthful, not one doctor or person said, I wonder if we should talk about what you're eating or dairy or anything. It seems like every time you have cereal, ice cream, and pizza from the cafeteria at college, you feel sick. It's embarrassing. Truly. It's, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah. I, once I figured it out and you know, it was my mom. <laughs> Give this woman a medical degree. <laughs> well, out of all the things, I mean, quite. <laughs> I don't want to get into all of the my pet peeves about animal proteins, but you know, dairy of all the things, dairy might be the worst for the and, body. Yeah, for the body, and yet, you know, we just have generations of physicians who believe that you know milk does the body good right it's like no it doesn't <laughs> it does it does baby calves good <laughs> it does not do people good at all no not me not most <laughs> not mo and that's the thing not most you know an astounding number of people yes. are lactose intolerant and yet and yet and you do know, two, two two servings of milk is part of every school lunch Oh my gosh. As it's mandated wild. by the government. The government. Oh yeah. That's that's the thing I'm interested on too from your perspective. So there's like all these levels, right? Of making <laughs> of making change and sure. policy. Yeah. Like what kind of policy and how do we work on that on that level? <sighs> Tell question. me, give me an answer. A, a great question. <laughs> so so the the um the school lunch guidelines and, and the dietary guidelines actually come from the agriculture department, not the FDA and not the health and human services, but from the agriculture department, which seems, a, seems a little odd and perhaps self-serving. A little fishy. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. And as um, you may or may not know, about every five years, the dietary guidelines are updated. They were just updated. And every time that they're going to update them, they convene a scientific advisory panel to, to give them guidance. And mm -hmm. for the last, well, in the 2014 
uh, advisory panel and then the 2019 advisory panel both suggested cutting out meat and eliminating dairy. And it didn't happen either time. They ignored that. They ignored their advisory panel and issued the same old guidelines that they always do. Because, oh, because, wow. because they're funded by lobbyists for the dairy and the egg industry and meat industry. And, you know, the, the broccoli industry doesn't have a good lobbying campaign <laughs> and got enough money. Yeah, got, I think they got that sued. Was... They get sued. Oh, really? Time. Yep. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, uh, has sued them several times for not And following. by them, suing them, who are we suing? The Department of Agriculture. The Department of Agriculture. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. For, for kind of succumbing to industry pressure and lobbying and being, you know, nefarious and whatnot. But we still have the so, same guidelines. And then that, that, that flows to school lunch guidelines. Right. And then that also flows. Oh, I got the hair thing happening there. And then that, I hear, also, I hear you. that also flows to um, uh, food stamps. I mean, they're all the same. So, mm. so the food policy is uh, still flawed and still dominated by forces that want you to eat things that aren't necessarily good for you. That they produce themselves. Yeah. I think that was a good, there was a portion of the Game Changers documentary yep. that I think did a good job of showing how it's just marketing. Yes. And Ooh. that was so important for a film like that because films before have talked about that as well, but I think Game Changers talked to a certain subset of the population. Uh, athletic men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> football watching men <laughs> yes which there hadn't been a documentary that catered to that right a absolutely not so i think that was really i'm glad they included things like that because i've watched it with a few people and a few family members and including my parents and you know i was just like i'm one of those people that if i've seen it i'm like watching them for their reaction and sure. not actually watching the film sure. so stuff like that started coming up and i'm just like looking at my dad like mm -hmm. exactly <laughs> But I think they did a good job of showing that and the funding, the funding, like why are the dietary guidelines coming from that department? That makes no sense. None, None whatsoever. So, so as just caring citizens, how do we like, do like, better. are you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do better. That's the message here. <laughs> I think there's a lot of um, talk too about like individual action versus mm -hmm. policy action as if both aren't important, I guess. Oh, I think both are very important. And, yeah. and honestly, what what <laughs> money money makes the system work, right? Right. And so where you spend your dollar makes a huge difference. Mm. Um, I think for the first time you're starting to see changes in the dairy industry mm -hmm. because people aren't buying as much milk. Right. Which is awesome. Yeah, there's been a boom in the last couple of years of products and different companies and changes. Absolutely. I mean, really, uh, five years ago, if you wanted to buy non-dairy butter, you know, mm -hmm. what were your earth balance was your choice. That was it. You know, right. Stuff's nasty. <laughs> yeah. I not care for it at all. I, I don't know, either. I know people, some people like it, but it's, I don't, I don't It's okay. It. It's, it's okay, but. It's got a weird flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I can taste it in everything. Miyoko's. Yeah, for sure. That's delicious. But, but you know, if you go to Cub Foods now, you've got uh, Smart Balance and Earth Balance. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a new one. Though. It's like Country Crock or some such thing. It's got, you know, three different kinds of plant butter. And uh, it's crazy. Melt. There's the Melt brand. And, you know, all of a sudden, all these options are out there. It's great. Yeah, and it's interesting because I've, you know, interviewed people from other countries as well. And I just talked to somebody um, from Ireland last week. And it's cool to see that those things are happening in other places and like oh, yeah, where they're sure. at. And, you know, some places are very ahead of the game. And um, <laughs> the UK is actually way ahead of us. Yes. Which yes. Is, which is interesting. I, we had the opportunity to go to London probably back in like 2014, 
2014, maybe okay. 2015, somewhere in there. I can't remember exactly. And um, yeah, and you were already plant amazing. based at that point, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It was it was so easy there. Oh it, really? E even then, it was easy. It was, and then uh, we ended up going taking the train over to Paris, and it was hard in Paris. Mm. It was easy in London, hard in Paris, and it wasn't just the language. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the French cuisine is all about butter and cream. Yeah. So. Oh, interesting. Well, it's exciting. It is exciting to hear and, and see the changes and, oh, and yeah. have places like J. Selby's. It is. It's, it, it's I, I agree. I, I'm, every year it's better than better. Mm -hmm. so. Is there anything that you want to share with listeners that I haven't asked you about or haven't got a chance to talk to you about? Eat your greens. <laughs> Final <laughs> message. It's been, it's been my message all along, I think. Uh, no, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, we're, we're here because we're, we're, we're here having a Zoom podcast meeting because of a pandemic rising out of a meat market in China. Mm -hmm. Really, do you need more reason? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, really. <laughs> how hard does that, that like that sentence how hard right is, there? How hard does it have to hit you in the head? <laughs> that sentence you... right there should be <laughs> should be enough, right? Exactly. It should be. I don't I don't know that it ever will be, but it should be. Oof. Well, so given all of that, given all that you're doing, running a restaurant, um, you mentioned running, what do you do to tap into self-care and, and take care of yourself? What are your go-tos? <laughs> or is that not possible right now? Uh, you know, uh, I still try to exercise regularly. That's, I mm -hmm. think, you know, keeps me sane. So Same. Yeah. What That's else? your go-to. Yeah, for sure. And I, and, and I cook a lot. I, I, I find solace mm. in the kitchen. Mm. I actually yeah, bake I, a lot, so. I enjoy, oh, I can't. I need some tips. I love to cook, but baking just <laughs> doesn't come together for me. It feels like a science and it, it is. That's I think that's my problem. That's yeah. it right there. Is, you you got to follow the recipe. You can't yeah, you can't do a dash of this and a dash of that. It doesn't work. That's probably why I love cooking. I this is the, <laughs> that's my theory is that people who end up in any sort of uh job or career or profession that's sciency, they bake. I swear it's, it's a it's pattern. Kind of, it's kind of true. And and I can tell you that um, I did not know this. I mean, I've been baking my whole life again. And and um, so I was really surprised to find uh, when you're hiring kitchen people that most of them can't bake <laughs> at all. Mm -mm. Um, you know, they, for them, for bake baking, is a very small subset of the cooking world mm -hmm. and and most cooks look at bakers with kind of this kind of mix of um, skepticism and awe yes <laughs> so like like i can't believe he could paid for doing this i don't know how you do it but also what kind of sorcery <laughs> exactly what kind of magic are you doing in there that's how I feel. I swear, because I don't know, man, I was a sociology and women's studies major and I just, yeah, you're not a I need, no, I need a dash of this and a pinch of that. Yeah. You know, if I hadn't gone into medicine, I'd definitely gone into engineering. So baking is right up my alley. I was going to say either way you were going to bake. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a natural form. Some, someday I'll put that on the list of things to practice. We, 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 um, we do most of our, own baking at Jay Selby's. Um, oh, really? So Lindsay, my general mm -hmm. manager, Lindsay and I uh, do almost all the baking, the cake, the carrot cake, the cookies, the brownies, uh, the pecan bars, all the desserts. <sighs> we, we bake all those ourselves between the two of us. So. Oh, wow. I did not realize that. Well, you, I will then <laughs> share right now that you are a great baker. <laughs> We do okay <laughs> well thank you so so much for joining me on the podcast um i was really excited to talk to you and i'm glad we made it work
Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Consciously Clueless. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you are in St. Paul, Minnesota, I highly recommend heading to Jay Selby's and looking at their fantastic menu. Can't go wrong. If you are enjoying this podcast, hit subscribe wherever you're listening. If you want to help me get this into the ears of more listeners, send it to a friend, text it to a family member, share on social media and tag me. Whatever you can do always helps. To be read on air as a review of the week, head to Apple Podcasts. And if you haven't yet, head over to patreon.com slash consciouslycarly and see what I'm up to over there. Until next time.